sitting there and the paper is burning there, the mosquito will stay sitting there until basically the pet fire burns right up to it. And then it may or may not take off. This is one of the reasons mosquitoes are controllable, because they don't flee from danger, because they're oblivious to danger. And to think that mosquitoes in the Everglades are going to fly 30 miles away from the Gorda, fleeing a forest fire, they have to fly over two other towns, which is strictly below me. Those mosquitoes were infected, they were left loose in Punta Gorda, and then it was studied to see how many people would become sick. And when they saw how many people would become sick, they knew whether they had a good weapon or a bad one. And I will be proving this to you as we develop. Uh, now this document here, very important, I'll tell you why. Although it was the military, that was developing these biological weapons and infecting mosquitoes and letting them out, they were in every case supervised by the U.S. Public Health Service. That's the NIH. That's Stephen Strauss. And the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control. That's the people who got 400 black men with syphilis and told them they were being treated in Tuskegee, Alabama, and they were giving them distilled water into their veins instead of penicillin and other things because they wanted to see what happens to 400 people who are left untreated and who have syphilis. How many of them die in one year? How many in two years? How many in three years? And so on. That outfit, the two of them, CDC and NIH, closely followed the progress of BW. You know what that is? Biological warfare. Research and development. These tests were monitored by NIH and CDC. Now, what was their theory? Their theory was that one person would get sick and it would go no further. But that's where they're wrong. The disease is communicable. If you have the pathogen in you and you breathe out and somebody next to you breathes in, they will breathe in the pathogen. Will you get sick? Not necessarily. Because not only do you need the pathogen, you need the genetic aptitude for a particular disease. Your immune system has to be down, and you have to have some kind of trauma, as we mentioned. But the public health services monitored these tests. They knew what was going on. Well, something else happened. In uh, 1970, uh, I'll be showing you that in a minute. There was a meeting on June the 9th, 1969, but they were talking about what they were going to spend money on in 1970 for the Department of Defense. The Department of Defense was saying, give us hundreds of millions of dollars. We're doing all kinds of marvelous things. There won't be a person on the planet left alive if we have our way, but we need money. Um, and they got quite a bit of it. Now, what happened in 1974? Well, Mr. Nixon retired in some other, and he was succeeded by his hand-picked friend, uh, Gerald Ford. And both of these people were part of a very close-knit linkage with the military. And they both had as their national security advisor, Mr. Henry Kissinger. And in 1974, Henry Kissinger wrote a document which he called NSAM 200, NSSM 200. And it's about this thick and it's very hard to get. But thanks to my very dear friend Janet, she got hold of a copy a few weeks ago and she sent it to me. Bless you. It's an important document, believe me. Because what does Kissinger say in that NSAM 200? He says this. He says there are 13 countries in the world where the population is growing too fast. We've got to find some way to slow down population growth. We've either got to find ways of killing more people or stopping them from having as many children. That is in NSAM 200. I just brought the first part of it here. 
But I wanted to show you something about NSAM too. It was sent to the president. Originally it was for Mr. Nixon, and then it went to his friend, Mr. Ford. But on page two of NSAM, NSAM 200, a carbon copy was sent to the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Now, why were the Joint Chiefs of Staff interested in the population of 13 countries in the Middle East and in Africa? Well, they were interested because at that time, the military philosophy was this, that the population growth in those countries was a bigger threat to America and to Western capitalist nations like Canada and Britain than was the animal. And we've got to find a way to get rid of some of those people. That's what NSSM 200 says. We've got to find a way to speed up the number of deaths. So they had a meeting. Now this, this meeting took place before us. And they all, Henry Kissinger already knew about this meeting because he was uh, Secretary of National Security. Uh, so he knew about this when he made this statement to, uh, first of all, to be for Nixon, and then to be for Ford. And in this document, as I'll be showing you in a minute, the head of the Chiefs of Staff Biological Warfare Division, Dr. Donald McCarthy, reported to a number of congressmen, and their names are here. These are real people, you see? These aren't people on the X-Files who are acted by Donald Sutherland or whoever. These are real living people who got elected in elections and went to Washington and they made speeches in Congress and in the Senate and they made speeches about quality of life and better serving their constituents. But then they met privately and secretly with Donald MacArthur, Dr. Donald MacArthur. And he told them about some plans they had to reduce the population in certain countries of the world by killing them. And in other countries of the world, they were only going to disable them. Now, in today's Boston Globe, which some of you possibly saw, on page A9, this page was given to me also by Janet Mayer. Thank you. Look at this story here, buried away on page 9. Let me read it to you. U.S. details ravages of illness in Africa. Now these are the 13 countries that Kissinger said the population is growing too fast and we've got to find some way to speed up the death rate. It ends Sam 200. And here's what it says. AIDS has cut the average life expectancy in Zimbabwe by a quarter of a century, the U.S. Census Bureau reports. Life expectancy in Zimbabwe is now 39 years. So if you're born in Zimbabwe, chances are you'll only get to age 39. It used to be 65. But with the help of the miracles of modern medicine, they've got it down to 39. And if they have their way, it will be down to 10. AIDS results in higher mortality rates in childhood as well as among young adults. And then they've got the rest of the figures here. In the Congo, for example, the life expectancy used to be 54, and now it's 49. Well, it's not a big change there because the Congo's been in a state of civil war for a while, and a lot of people are being knocked off. In uh, Botswana, the life expectancy used to be 62, and now it's 40 years. 20 years chopped off. The life expectancy in the 13 countries identified by Mr. Kissinger, all of them are being reduced by AIDS. Now, this is the front page of a government document. It is printed by the, uh, the uh, House Printing Office. It's not something that I thought might exist and made up. 